What's going on guys? This is Eric with Olympic Health Physics and today we're going to be talking about the JZAC Phantom. Alright, so today we're talking about that JZAC Phantom. The JZAC Phantom is going to be used for your gamma camera uh, quality control, either with the quarterly biannual or the annual test. So the JZAC Phantom is made by Data Spectrum. Uh, it's an acrylic Phantom, PMMA, and the one that you want for ACR accreditation is going to be the Deluxe Phantom. There are other uh, JZAC looking uh, look-alike phantoms out there that are imposter phantoms uh, that are not going to be acceptable for the ACR. So you want to make sure that you have the right phantom that comes from Data Spectrum that is the deluxe JZAC phantom. There's the, the full version, which is this version here. This is the uh, 20 centimeter uh, diameter. There is a mini ACR phantom. That mini phantom is going to be used for these uh, small uh, cardiac dedicated cameras that you can use the mini phantom on this video here we're just going to be talking about the large phantom so this phantom will we'll end up filling it with water and, and I will show you how to uh, how to set this up with arranging the the rods and the the spheres the water that we add here we add we add water because that's going to be a good mimicker for tissue we want to try to mimic tissue as, as closely as possible and so the density of water and the density of tissue is about the same so that's why we use water in these phantoms and we typically are going to add in some sort of radioactivity either uh, technetium or thallium or gallium or indium whatever it is that you're you're wanting to uh, to analyze the the spec uh, quality uh, characteristics of your camera that's the isotope that we're going to use in the phantom so within this phantom there's three different sections so if we start here at the bottom section we have the the rod section the rod section is going to be there to uh, take a look at the resolution or test the resolution of the system coming up from the rod section we have the uh, spheres that are sort of right in the middle those spheres are going to be there to look at contrast and then above that, we have a uniform section of the phantom. And that uniform section of the phantom is there to test uniformity. So that's where we're going to be looking for things like ringing artifacts or other non-uniformities in that section of the phantom. We will look for non-uniformities in other sections of the phantom as well. But the other sections of the phantom are designed uh, specifically for looking at resolution and for contrast. One other thing that I want to mention about this particular Phantom is this is set up right now for a SPECT system. So looking at, at a gamma camera, you can use this same Phantom to look at a PET scanner, but you need to make some modifications to it. You need to take the, the spheres out, uh, the contrast spheres, those come out, and then the lid changes from, from the normal uh, JZAC SPECT lid over to the pet lid and once we do that we it's called an esser phantom with the esser lid and so that is the configuration for pet we're not going to be talking about pet today we're only talking about uh spec and how we we arrange this phantom now that you know a little bit more about the phantom itself let's show you how we're going to arrange the phantom so let's go ahead and get started with putting this phantom together We put it on the side we can see this section down here is the rod section and then we have different wedges uh, within the rod section so with the deluxe JZAC Phantom we start with the largest rod section here and this uh, rod section is 12.7 millimeters and then we go to progressively smaller and smaller rod sections the rod section is held into the phantom by a center screw. This is a nylon screw that goes all the way through the um, through the rod section and screws in. There are threads here on the bottom, and then we'll also see that we have threads here. This is where our contrast spheres will go. So here we have our contrast spheres. The spheres are going to go inside the phantom. I want to just go through real quick the sizes for the spheres. So from largest over on this side to smallest, um, those are the spheres up there. Those spheres are going to be 31.8 millimeters. The next one's 25.4. 
19.1, 15.9 right here, and then we have the 12.7 and the 9.5. So we're gonna take each of these spheres and they are going to go inside of our phantom and the threads down here at the bottom are gonna screw into the bottom of the phantom. So arranging the spheres in the phantom is where uh, some people can sometimes go, go wrong. So what we wanna do is we wanna take the largest sphere and align that with the largest uh, wedge of the uh, rod section. We also need to align the holes so that we can put the end of the, um, the threaded section of the sphere through the rod section and we're going to screw that in. I like to screw these in um, not by grabbing the actual sphere itself. We don't want to grab the sphere and turn the sphere because these, are, um, these can pop off and so what you want to try to do is grab the stem and rotate the stem to screw the, uh, the rod in. And then what we want to do is we want to go from align the largest sphere to the largest rod section and then we want to take the second smallest sphere and align it to the second smallest rod section. And we're just going to continue around in a circle, adding in our spheres. Okay, so now we have all of our uh, spheres are placed in the phantom. They're screwed in through the, the threads at the bottom of the phantom. And we have each uh, sphere is aligned with the corresponding rod section, going from largest to smallest. So the next thing that we do is we fill the phantom with water. I usually fill it up pretty close to the top of the, of the phantom. Fill it all the way up uh, as much as you can, and then we put the lid on it. I'm not gonna, gonna put any water in it right now, but um, whenever you fill this with water, you can use regular tap water. The particular uh, type of water is not too important because we're gonna uh, be draining these phantoms periodically anyway. So you can just go ahead and fill it with regular tap water from the sink. And then once we get it filled, we're gonna go ahead and put that lid on. So with the lid, we have, uh, we have holes here in the lid and those are gonna align with the, the threaded uh, screw holes on the face of the Phantom. So what I normally do, and this is just a, a pet peeve of mine, is I'll usually uh, align the fill port with the largest sphere. And that way I always know what orientation my Phantom's in. So we're gonna press the lid into place and seat the O-ring. And then we're going to attach the, uh, the lid with the nylon screws. So here's our nylon screw right here. And I usually just get these started um, before I tighten them down. All right, tightening up the last screw here. So we wanna make sure that the lid is seated uh, well. We don't wanna over tighten the nylon screws because we could snap them. We don't wanna do that. Um, but we do want it to be a nice uh, snug fit. After we have the lid on, we have it filled up uh, with mostly uh, with water. We can go ahead and add our technetium in here if uh, we're using technetium to, to do our quality control. So we can add our, our technetium here and give it a good mix. Whenever I mix it, I like I go ahead and put the um, the fill port screw in, and then you're gonna mix it just like what you would a kit. You can roll it back and forth on the table. Do that a few times, get it good and mixed, and then once you have it mixed, you can um, take the take the screw off and go ahead and fill the rest of the phantom with water. Sometimes what I'll do instead of filling it with regular tap water, if, if I don't have much to go, I will go ahead and just add in some, um, some saline, use a 60cc syringe. You can add in either saline or regular tap water. Once you get it filled back up, you can go ahead and add the fill, fill port screw back, tighten it down, and your phantom is ready to go. You're ready to scan with the phantom.
Okay, and now just a couple uh, thoughts on taking care of the phantom. With these phantoms, they're going to have radioactivity in them, so you want to let that radioactivity uh, decay. Go ahead and put it into decay and storage. But once it's decayed, then you're left with just water in the phantom. That water in the phantom, you do want to drain the water in the phantom if you're not going to be using the phantom for, for a, an ex extended period of time. So if you're not going to be using it for, say, the next several months, I would go ahead and drain the water out of the phantom. It'll help the phantom last a little bit longer, stay a little bit cleaner. Whenever you, If you do want to clean the phantom, you don't want to use any kind of solvents. You just want to use regular soap and water to clean the phantom, and that'll help take care of the phantom uh, pretty well. And there you have it. That's the JZAC Phantom. A little bit about the different sections within the Phantom, how to put the Phantom together, and how to care for the Phantom as well. If you have questions or comments about the Phantom or what it's used for or how to use the Phantom, feel free to shoot us a note. You can drop us a comment down below or you can send us an email. We'll be happy to help you out with any questions you have around the JZAC Phantom.